Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Soil and Margaritas. I am so excited that you're here today. My next guest is an amazing, an amazing gardener, and she has a great eye for design. I hope that by showing you her garden, talking to her about the things that she has done, the amount of work, and all of her beautiful, beautiful designs that she has made in her garden, I hope that you can really get some inspiration from her gorgeous, gorgeous garden. And if you're enjoying these kind of videos of me introducing you to new gardeners, please let me know in the comments because it really, really helps me decide what kind of content to put in this channel. Hi, Ursula. How are you? Hey, good. Glad to be here. I am so glad to have you here with me today. I am so excited for you guys uh, watching this video because you are going to see her gorgeous garden. And I mean, you have an amazing place. And if for the people that don't know you, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what kind of garden do you have, where you're located, your gardening zone and all of that. So, so that people have an idea of, you know, like what, what you have. All right, well, I'm Ursula and I am in North Carolina in zone 7B. Uh, and I don't have a huge, huge garden for the fact that I'm actually on 16 acres. You'd think my garden would actually be bigger, <laughs> but I call it my little novelty garden and I'm expanding year by year. How long have you, how long have you been in that property? Uh, is it very new or have you been there uh, living for a while? Now I've lived here in North Carolina for the past, let's say six years now, but in actuality, I've only really gotten this garden up and going in the last three years. So it's still somewhat new, you know, uh, which is great. I think for those who are newer gardeners who are like, whoa, how many hours do you dedicate to that to get it to that point? Or how, how have you managed to get this to this point? And I keep saying, you know, it's little bits at a time, but those little itty bitty increments can make a huge difference after the course of like a year. Right. And you mentioned three years, but have you been gardening more, longer than three years? I mean, have you have you grown any vegetables or flowers before uh, before that? So before this, I was more into houseplants and I love dealing with all things houseplants. But, you know, when you move to a spot that's in the middle of nowhere, and you think to yourself, OK, I have all this land. <laughs> what am I going to do with it? Um, you know, you start to ask the question, hey, I know I love to grow things. Um, I've tried gardening in the past, and it's something that I've always wanted to raise my kids doing and um, had a passion for, but maybe didn't quite have the time. It wasn't the season of life for me to dedicate as much time as I am now. Um, so like I said, this last three years has been like the big ramp up where it's actually become a passion. Before I would say maybe it was even a little bit of a chore. That sounds terrible to say, but that was just the reality. <laughs> and and right now, from what you post on your gorgeous pictures uh, on Instagram and on your website, I see that you do mostly vegetables. Is that correct? And you throw up uh, some flowers in between. I, I do. I do consider this my vegetable garden. Although, let's be honest, the amount of flowers I put in this garden it's starting to be a little questionable. <laughs> um, so, but I am one of those people who believes that, you know, one of the things that's great about your garden is whether you consider it a flower garden or consider it a vegetable garden or herb garden, whatever, you know, you can do whatever the, wherever the wind takes you, you know, you can throw some stuff in there and just see how it works out and how they interact together. Um, it's just such an amazing ecosystem to see that they all benefit from one another. So I started thinking, it, okay, I'm going to throw together a really great, really practical vegetable garden. But when I started becoming really passionate about gardening was when I first saw some incredible gardens out on Instagram. They were just visually a delight to be in. And I thought, okay, I need more flowers. <laughs> Once I started adding those flowers in and some of the little charming features here and there, girl, that was all she wrote. I was all in. <laughs> so 16 acres is not a small piece of land. I mean, you definitely have the space to do everything that you want to do, right? Whether it's vegetables or flowers. Are there any plans uh, that, you know, for the future to do something with just flowers, flower related? Because girl, you have, you definitely have the space. I do. Oh my goodness. Granted, I think sometimes my dreams are a little bigger than my reality, you know? <laughs> um, so much to my family's chagrin, because they're like, you already spent all your time outdoors. Like, really? Are you going to really like do something with all 16 <laughs> acres? But I do. I want to do entire flower borders surrounding the garden. I mean, I'm even thinking about woodland gardening. I, I thought to myself when I ran across somebody who was doing that, I was like, 
mine exploded because a lot of my acreage is wooded. And I thought, okay, you gotta make the best of what you've got here. But it's just me. I'm the only one who does most of the work around here. So when people ask, you know, like, so, okay, how much, how much gardening help do you have? I'm like, there are no gardeners here. I am the gardener here. <laughs> so these grandiose plans of mine could take a lifetime. Right. Do you, do you volunteer your family, your kids to help you in the garden with certain things? So my kids are all teenagers now. And as you know, when they're little, you can get them to participate in whatever kind of thing. It doesn't seem like a chore. They're excited and happy about it. And they run to the outdoors. Okay. They have hit that point in life where they're kind of like, oh, mom, do we have to? <laughs> but periodically, yes, I'll still grab the whole family. Be like, okay, guys, we need some sunshine. We need some fresh air. We need some family time. Let's hit it. So usually for those really big projects, once in a while, I'll, you know, bring everybody outdoors and get them to all pitch in. But for the most part, it's just me out here. I have two teenagers and I, I completely agree. I have gotten to the point where it's like, oh, do you guys want pizza tonight? You want your favorite pizza for dinner? I need you for a couple hours outside and let's make that happen. <laughs> I like it. Bribery. I'm going to use that next time. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about your gorgeous, gorgeous greenhouse that you have built on your property. And I... I say this because, you know, like I see the pictures, people that, that don't know, you see the pictures, see the finished product and think, oh, you know, like she has that, she had the space, she probably hired someone to do it. It's nice. But you did that all yourself, right? You did that by yourself. Tell us a little bit how all of that went, because that was, that's not a small project. No, let me tell you, Ooh, honey, that was like the project of projects. I was not sure I could do it. I will be honest. Um, I only started building things maybe, I want to say like maybe eight years ago, small things. And so this was like, stretched my skills to the limit. But when I started thinking about possibly um, adding a greenhouse onto an existing shed I have, which is where I am right now, <laughs> a little part of my greenhouse here. And it's not huge. It's like a 10 by 12 um, little section here, um, has good height to it. But I thought, okay, how am I going to do this? So a lot of Google, <laughs> a lot of creating plans and figuring it out. But when I found salvaged windows on Facebook Marketplace, I was like, this is it. This is the moment. I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. So, um, yeah, it's, it was a task, but it was worth every moment. And I share all of the video and the how-to and the steps along the way. I'm over on my blog, Homemade by Carmona. Um, but let me tell you, anybody who is looking to try and create their own greenhouse, it can be so rewarding. So even if you have to bring somebody in who has a little more skill than you, to be able to grow things year round is a game changer. Oh, I bet. And I am so, honestly, I am so jealous. Whenever I see people that be there, you know, that build their own greenhouses, you know, because they found cheap windows on, you know, the marketplace or someone was giving away free windows. I'm like, what are the people, you know, my local people that are giving away free windows or windows for a dollar? Like I, I look at, you know, at my Facebook marketplace and the cheapest all breaking down window that I can find is like $50 because it's antique, you know, like I'm going to need a bunch of those, you know, like where are the people selling these, you know, like oh, no. windows because I don't know. I, you guys, I feel like are so lucky to, to have found that. I, I, I definitely am. I, I did have to stock Facebook for like a year before I found them. <laughs> but that being, said, <laughs> that being said, you never know. So just keep the hope alive. <laughs> What would you say was the, the hardest part on when you were building the greenhouse? So what's the thing that you were like, oh, I don't know about this. I'm not really sure about this. So it turns out that putting together a frame out of two by fours is not hard to pop the windows into, okay? It's the roof. <laughs> it's creating, knowing how to create, you know, rafters and a beam and all of that stuff. And I'm like, okay, I'm not a builder. Am I going to make sure this is like secure, this is sound, and this is done properly? Um, so it, you know, I, it was something that was definitely going to be a challenge, but, um, I did have a friend who is in con contracting Um, he does, you know, that kind of work. And I just said, okay, just look at my plans and tell me, is this safe? Is this going to work? Will this pass muster when an inspection happens and all of that? And so, um, yeah, that's always helpful to have somebody who knows how to, what they're doing when it comes to that part of things. 
But even if it was just a small little, you know, aluminum based something, something, little greenhouse out here, let me tell you, it can just bring so much charm to, you know, a backyard, to your garden. Um, so I know we don't do that as much here in America. It's funny because I see a lot of that in, you know, other countries where I guess colder countries even where they'll have little greenhouses. Um, and I just keep thinking, oh, we need more of that here. You know, it's just, it's like I said, it's a little game changer. Oh, I bet. And for people that don't know you or that are not familiar with your growing season, uh, for what is the what is the the season that you have? Is it a long season or is it like me here, which is from May to October? I mean, it's it's not a long season, but it's a decent season for me. Is that longer for you? Is your season a little bit longer for growing uh, vegetables outside? It is now. So where I live, um, I do have a longer season, which is. Oh, just wonderful. I used to live before this in the snow belt. So I do know what it's like to garden in snowy, cold areas. Okay. But, um, I, you know, now that I'm a little further south, uh, we have a much milder climate. Um, and we probably get maybe a couple snow falls out of the entire year. Um, but it's doable. So I'm grateful for that. But I, I, I've done both. I have gardened in a cold climate. I have gardened in a warmer climate. It's totally possible. And now that you have had your vegetable garden for three years and going, uh, and on top of being, you know, an amazing uh, harvest from the videos that you share, it's it's gorgeous. I mean, your eye for design uh, when it comes to your garden, decorating, adding lights, adding little details. And you guys, if you haven't checked her her website, Homemade by Carmona, uh, or use her Instagram. I'm always like looking at her pictures and I'm like, oh, I want that. Oh, I want that. Oh, I wonder if I can find that here. You know, like I'm always, <laughs> and you love to use the color black for, from the pictures that you share. So I am always like, you know, just like drooling over your images. Do you have a background on photography? No, I don't. Um, <laughs> I started, when I started this, it was both home. I do home and garden stuff um, on my blog, but I decided at some point, okay, a lot of my gardening audience or actually my home audience isn't going to see all the details of my gardening stuff. And after gardening, like you said, there's something just so it draws you in, you know, um, especially when you're able to add little bits of charm here and there. And that I, I could, I find, I find myself like spending half my time instead of gardening, half the time, you know, like videoing and taking photos. It's just something that's going to happen. I'm telling you, it's going to happen to all y'all too. <laughs> It is definitely you become very a photographer. Addicting. You become a photographer in your own right, just by nature of capturing, you know, such a beautiful um, landscape around you. Exactly, exactly. I am honestly, I so I found you up, I believe, a couple of years through your Instagram for your gardening channel, and you know, I was drilling over your stuff, and from there, I realized that you have. You started or you started your website, your blog for your home decor and, and renovation, which, by the way, are amazing. I was actually checking it this morning and I was like, I am going to be like redoing my, you know, my room and my bathroom. I mean, you have amazing things going on. But I love that you also bring that to your garden as well. I mean, you have you definitely have an eye for design. And, and I, I am so grateful that you share all of that with us through through your images. You know what? I appreciate that. That that means a lot to me, especially coming from you. But let me tell you, it wasn't until I transferred my passion for design from the indoors to the outdoors that I think garden became that gardening became that game changer for me. Because um, you know, before there was an aspect of it that just felt like a chore. It was like, okay, I believe in gardening for all of the amazing perks and benefits. So I want to make it an important part of my life, an intentional part of my life, right? But it still sometimes felt like a chore. I'm just going to be honest. And so now adding the charming touches into the garden, you know, adding the flowers inside the vegetable garden, <clears throat> um, adding the things that are, you know, the lights, the string lights that hang over things and the arches and all the little things that make it a magical place that just seemed to wake up my heart. Um, so then the passion and the love for spending time out there meant that I was spending more time, you know, actually cultivating this space. And so I think that, you know, 
for a lot of people who are thinking only food and only, you know, the only the, you know, top benefits that we all think of, which are amazing. But I still always say, don't forget that it's also a place where you can cultivate, you know, sort of a peace. Um, you know, it can be kind of that getaway right there in your own home. Like I don't have to travel in order to feel every day, have a little moment of a little vacation right there in my own yard, you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I love that you share that because it is so true. A lot of people, that especially, you know, beginners are focusing a lot on, on the growing part, on how things should look like because, you know, other gardeners are doing this, you know, X, Y, and Z way. But a lot of a lot of us forget, you know, like, you know, what about the things that I like? You know, do I like, uh, you know, black raised beds? Do I like, you know, concrete raised beds? You know, just bringing that own um, unique aspect of you into your own place, I think, has a lot to do. And, and I just love that because, honestly, people, people like you share your, your home, share your ideas, your decor. And then, I mean, it's easy to see why your garden is just, it's just amazing and it's beautiful because you have all of that around you, I think. Now that you have your vegetable garden, what is one of the challenges that, that you have in your own property or in your growing season um, as far as growing vegetables? Ooh, what is one of the challenges? What challenges do I not have? <laughs> um, <laughs> ooh, this past gardening season, I had new challenges pop up that I'd never had before. And isn't that the crazy thing about gardening? You think, just when you think you're like, okay, I got this down. Oh no, honey something comes along and just changes everything. And you're like, wait, what? So I saw pests this past year that I've never seen in the last few years of gardening. I was like, what is this? And why has it taken over? Um, this past year we also had in, in December, which I like to garden year round. So, I mean, if snow comes and dumps, if ice comes, you know, that's all right. I usually put things under cover and, you know, go for it. Oh, well, in December, a couple of my raised beds that are covered, they got hit hard. I just didn't quite know how important it was to make sure that, you know, little things were tucked in really well. And, you know, and it ended up being a lesson. Okay, I lost two beds full of all my beautiful broccoli. I, I just about cried. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> not the broccoli. My family loves broccoli. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, it happens. It happens. You lose things to, you know, whatever mistakes that may have happened. Some things are in your control. You learn. Some things are out of your control and you still learn. Um, so <laughs> I always tell new gardeners, don't be discouraged. It doesn't matter how long a person has been doing this. Something is going to come up and they are going to learn something new from it. So you just keep on trekking on. <laughs> Uh, so while we're talking about that, while we're talking about, you know, beginners, what is the, the one tip that you will give uh, to somebody that sees your garden and says, you know, like, oh, I want that. I want the greenhouse. I want the raised beds. I want to do all of that uh, amazing stuff. Like, where do they start? Where do, what is the advice that you will give them to, to how do they start, you know, with their own journey? Wow. I think the first thing I would say is don't, don't get lost in the details. I think that there's so much content and information out there, which is amazing and so much inspiration that sometimes if you're someone like me, you can almost get overwhelmed with all of that and think, well, hey, if I don't do this just right, you know, what's going to happen? Um, how do I fix this? How do I start? Um, so I say start small. Take it a few little things at a time. And the beautiful thing about gardening is, you know, it can change. You can change things season by season, week by week. So don't be afraid to just start, dive in wherever you are. You don't have to have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted to get started. What is one thing that you have struggled to grow uh, in your garden, whether it's a vegetable or a flower? What is the one thing that you have been trying and trying and, and tell us a little bit about that? Lavender. I don't know why. <laughs> and it's, it's so funny because I'll hear these stories of, oh, lavender is the best thing to grow. You just let it go. It'll do its own thing. You know, give it almost no care. Whew. I don't know what's going on with lavender here in my area or if it's just me, but lavender does not want to grow. Um, I'll start it. I'll get it partway. It'll dry up and just 
I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> I guess it wasn't meant to be, not yet anyway, but that's okay because it doesn't mean I'm not gonna try again. I'm probably gonna try and fail year after year. <laughs> It is what it is. I don't know how to feel about that because I just ordered a bunch of lavender seeds uh, that I'm going to try from seed. So wish me luck because now that you say that, I'm like, hmm, okay, okay. <laughs> it's probably just me. I'm sure you'll be great. <laughs> and I do have, I do have some lavender uh, in my property in some of my raised beds, but I got those, you know, like in one gallon containers. But I do want to try to get like a couple of rows uh, in some of my flower beds, but I need like a bunch of plants. So I'm like, I'm just gonna try them from seed and see if they take, right? Um, yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know next year how, that, how that turned out. <laughs> and then when you're successful, phone me back because I'm gonna need to know what I was doing wrong. Actually, anybody, <laughs> anybody have any lavender tips, send them my way. <laughs> People who are watching, if you have any tips to grow lavender in North Carolina, please help this poor woman. <laughs> So where can people find you, uh, people looking for your gorgeous uh, gardening and also your your home decor, where can they find you? Um, well, I do both home and garden on all my channels, um, on Instagram, my website, uh, YouTube, all the places. <laughs> um, at home, made by Carmona. Uh, but for those who are really passionate about just gardening, find me at Carmona Acres because on Carmona Acres, on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, that's where I do the deep dive that I don't think, you know, anybody else, except for those who are really passionate about gardening, gardening you know, cares about. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I am there, I'm there all the time. Thank you so much, Ursula, for being here. I have enjoyed this tag. And if you guys are watching, make sure to follow her on her Instagram and check out her blog. She has amazing ideas, and I know that by the time that you watch some of her stuff, you're going to have a list of projects to do in your own garden because you have amazing stuff. And I truly appreciate you sharing all of that with us. Oh, I'm so glad that I could be here. I appreciate everything. Thank you so much, Ursula. Bye. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have a minute, please check out her accounts, her Instagram, her website, her blog. I hope that you got some inspiration from her gorgeous garden. If you would like to check out other videos of other gardeners that I have introduced you here in the past, just check these two videos right here and let me know what you think. Thank you and until the next time.